Hi guys, today we are going to see how you can create and use macros in Excel. Now first, let's see why do you need macros and what they can do for you. Let's say you have an Excel sheet and you want to do the same task on multiple Excel sheets. It can be a simple task like sorting the data or a complex task like doing calculations with data. Now you have two ways to do the task. Either you can do it manually doing the same task every single time or you can use macros to automate your task and get them done in seconds. Now you may think it sounds good, but what is a macro? Macro is a feature in Excel that lets you record any task on an Excel sheet and do the same task automatically within seconds. This can help you save a lot of time and money for the tasks that you do repeatedly. Now, not just a single task, you can automate different kinds of tasks on Excel by creating different macros. And also, once you have created a macro, you can use it on any number of Excel sheets as you want. All right. So after watching this video, you will be able to create macros and automate any kind of task on Excel. All you have to do is just do the task once manually and the macros feature will record the steps that you do. And once you're done from the next document, you can just run the macros that you created and your tasks will be automatically done within a few seconds. It's that easy and it's going to be very simple and interesting. So make sure you watch this video till the end to learn how to do it. Well, I'm Brian from Website Learners and let's start creating macros and automate our tasks in Excel. Now to create macros, we are going to do two steps. The first step is to enable the macros option in Excel. Now if you go through these menus, you can see we don't have any option for the macros. So first, we need to enable the macros option in the menu. To enable it, make sure on the home tab on your Excel sheet. Now just right click here and click customize then you will get this window. Now the macro option can be found under the developer menu and you can see here developer option is not selected. So let's select that then click OK and you can see that we have got a new menu item called developer. So let's click on it and you can see that we have got the record macro option. OK, once you got the macro option, let's go to the final step which is to record your steps using macros. So let's see an example to understand how you can record and use macros. Let's say every day at work, you're getting some contact details like this, which has their names and ages. Now, you want to format these details like this, which will have separate columns with the first name and the last name. And also, you want to highlight the ages above 18. Now to automate these tasks, we are going to create a macro recording. So to start recording your steps, just click record macro, and give a name for your macro. I'm going to enter format contact details. Now here, you need to enter the name without any spaces. So I have added underscores in between. Okay, next, we have a few more options here. Here, you can set a unique shortcut key to run the macro. Next, you can use this option to select where you want to save your macro recordings. So if we click here, you can see that we have got several options. You can save it on this Excel file or a new file. Then if you delete the Excel file, your macros will also be deleted along with it. If you save it on your personal workbook file, you can use it on any Excel sheet you want. But your macros will not be saved within this particular Excel file. So now it's your choice which way you want to save. I'm going to save it in this Excel workbook file. Okay, finally, you can write a description about your task. I'm going to leave it empty. Now to start recording our macro, let's click OK and the macro recording will be started. Now you can start recording your steps. Like I said earlier, I'm going to record my steps to format this data like this. So to format it, first I'm going to add headings. So let's right click here and click insert. Now I'm going to add my headings. OK, now to rearrange the data into our respective columns, first let's select this data then click here and select text to columns. Now click next. As we need to separate them based on the space, I'm going to select space and then click next. And now if we click finish, you can see that our contact details have been arranged in respect to columns. Okay, so now we are done with the first part of our formatting. Let's continue with the next part which is to highlight the ages above 18. So let's select all the ages. 
then in the home tab let's go to conditional formatting highlight cell rules and click greater than as i want to highlight the ages above 18 let's enter 18 here and click ok as you can see our cells have been highlighted ok now we have completed the steps that we want our macro to do so once you have completed your steps to stop the macro recording you can just click this little square button and your macro recording will be successfully completed now you can use this macro to apply the same steps to the new data automatically within seconds so it's time to test the new macro that we just created are you ready so to test it let's select a new sheet here and as you can see we have a new set of contact details without any formatting now all you have to do is go to the developer menu then click this macros option and you will get this window here you can see the macros which you have created now if you remember we saved our macros in this workbook if you have saved your macro in a different workbook just click here select where you have saved your macro and your macro will appear here ok now to run our macro just select the macro that we created before and if you click run your macro will run and complete your task automatically so this is how you can create and run macros in the same way you can create macros for any task you want and complete your tasks automatically ok there's another quick way to run macros to check that first let me reset the data so the other way is to use a shortcut key to run your macro you can set the shortcut key when you create the macro so i have set my shortcut key as ctrl plus j so if i click ctrl and j you can see that our data has been automatically formatted into how we want so this means our macro has successfully worked and completed our task okay now we need to save this workbook file to keep our macro for the upcoming tasks so to save our file let's click save here then select a folder and if we click save again you can see we are getting an error this message simply means if we save this workbook as a normal excel file we will lose our macro recording so to save your workbook along with your macro recording you need to save your file as a macro enabled workbook to do that let's click no then just click here select macro enabled workbook finally click save and your workbook will be saved along with your macros so this is how you can save macro recording okay now there's another way to run a macro which is by adding a button like this to the excel sheet to learn how you can do that let's open a new workbook and link a macro to it now if we click the button it will run the macro for you cool right so to create a button like this in the developer menu just click on the insert option then select the button now click on your excel sheet and you will get this window now you need to select a macro that you want to run as you can see we don't have any macro saved in this workbook now if we select all open workbooks you can see we have got the macro that is saved in workbook 1 so let's select the macro which we created before now just click ok and the macro will be assigned to your button now if we click the button you can see that the data has been formatted automatically so this is how you can run a macro from the button ok now if you want to change the button name just right click on the button and click edit text now you can change the button name however you want I am going to type format customer data now you can also resize the button by pressing and holding the right key on the button and then resize it like this and finally click on the excel sheet to save the changes ok once you have created the button now you can easily copy and paste the button into any workbook you want and run the macro by clicking the button so let's see how you can do that just right click on the button select copy now go to the workbook or the excel sheet in which you want to run the macro I am going to open a new workbook now right click on the excel sheet then select paste and the button will be ready now if you click this button it will run the macro and complete your task so this is how you can run macros in different ways. Okay guys, now you know how you can create and run macros. In the same way, you can create any macro you want. Next, let's say you made a mistake when you're recording a macro. For example, let's say instead of typing first name, you type something else. Now you want to change it after recording the macro. So how will you do that? Now you have two ways to solve this issue. 
You can again record the same steps from scratch or you can edit the macro that you already created. The easy way is to edit the macro you already created. So now let's see how you can edit a macro. To edit a macro, just click macros here. Then select the macro that you want to edit. I'm going to select this macro. Now click edit and you will get this macro editor. Now these codes can look complex, but they're actually easy to edit. Let me explain. Like I said earlier, we want to change this title. So here you can see we have the title. So just select it and change it however you want. Instead of friend name, I'm going to enter first name. Now to save the changes, just click save. And now to test our changes, we can go to a new worksheet in the same workbook, which has the raw data already present. So let's go to a new sheet. Click on macros. Let's select the same macro which we have edited. Then if I click run, you can see that the title has successfully changed to first name. So this is how you can edit a macro. In the same way, you can edit any macro you want. Okay, there's one more issue you might face while using macros to automate your tasks. For example, when you're recording a macro, let's say you had data for five rows. This time, you got the data for eight rows. So in this case, if we run this macro, you can see that it has left the new rows without formatting because macros are using the absolute reference points, which we had selected when we were recording the macro. So if you record for five rows, the macro will only work for those specific five rows. Now to include the new data for formatting or any kind of tasks that you want to do, instead of creating a new macro, you can easily expand the selection by editing the macro. So to do that, just click macros, Now select the macro and click edit. Then you will get this macro editor. Now you need to mention how many rows you want the macro to run. So to do that, here we need to find how to mention the rows. Here you can see it is only selecting A2 is to A6, which is from the second row to the sixth row here. Now if I click here, you can see that it shows A9 for the ninth row. So here we need to mention A9 to select up to the ninth row. But instead of only nine rows, to make it future proof, you can even make it select any number of rows you want. So I'm going to enter A100 so that the macro will run for 100 rows when we have the data. Okay, now as you can see, we are also making a selection here. Here, the macro is selecting from cell 2 to cell 6. To expand the selection like we did before, let's enter C100. Okay, now to save our changes, let's click save. And to test our changes, we're going to use a new sheet. So let's click macros. Now select the same macro which we have edited. And now if we click run, you can see that we have successfully formatted the data for all the rows automatically, including the new rows. So this is how you can do corrections on your macro recordings. Okay, so that's it guys. Now you know how you can create and use Excel macros to automate your Excel tasks. Okay, if you want to know how to create a mail merge using Google Sheets with Gmail, you can watch this video. Also make sure you click the subscribe button to see more videos from us. So thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.